call this regular city council meeting to order. If you please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, members present this evening are myself, Mayor Morrow, Council Members Gearbaugh, CO, McClellan, Mitchell, Dillon, and Mayor Pro Temp Tar. From City Staff, we have City Manager Campbell, Clerk Royal, Police Chief Hart, DPW Director Fordyce, Treasurer Bennett, um, Wastewater Treatment Superintendent Wygowski going to be here tonight or no? No. Um, and we have Attorney Sweats with us as well. Uh, the rest of you who are in the audience this evening, we welcome you and we encourage you to sign in in the back to my left and you can co find copies of the agenda on the back table. At this time, the Chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as submitted unless there are amendments. Submitted. Moved by CEO is to approve as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Mitchell. All those in favor of approving the agenda as submitted signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We come now to citizen comments on agenda items. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question on an item that appears on this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Are there any comments on agenda items this evening? Then we'll proceed to the consent agenda. The following consent agenda will normally be adopted without discussion. However, at the request of any citizen or council member, any item may be removed from the consent agenda for council discussion. Your Honor, I'd like to remove um, C19-94, which I believe is the general fund budget amendments, and um, C19-217, the resolution to accept road certification. Okay, let me just, so. I'll support that. That would be the first item under new business, and then the second item under new business. Okay. So that was moved to approve the consent agenda as amended, Mr. Gearbaum? Correct. And that was seconded by Councilwoman Mitchell? Yes, sir. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Uh, then we'll come to C-19-94. This is a um, motion to acknowledge and to approve FY 21st budget amendments. Move to acknowledge and approve. Okay, moved by Mitchell. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Tahar. Discussion, Mr. Gearbaugh. Yes, I believe this is the one where um, there's an amendment to um, add the purchase of a new car for our assistant deputy director, DPW, DPW director. Um, I'd like to know, I guess for myself is, I know it wasn't in the budget originally, so this is being proposed, and what do we currently have as inventory for cars? considering that we have some additional new expenses hitting this year that I would think that we would be postponing this for another year. <coughs> Certainly. Um, so currently we have um, DPW Director uh, Fordyce uh, has a pickup uh, F-154 by four. Um, the um, uh, building department for both building as well as code, code enforcement, property appraiser, they there's two um, Ford Focuses, um, and then there's a, a um, general uh, city hall pool car here for staff. Uh, it's a, a Taurus. Um, as far as other departments, um, PCF has two pickups and a Crown Vic. They're used by both staff and crew members. The rec, rec center has a, um, a pickup that's used mostly by uh, their maintenance person, uh, also for plowing. And, and running for parts and those types of things. Um, and then uh, uh, their van, they have a, a van that they use uh, for m mostly for programming and, and transporting uh, folks and equipment for programming. Um, and the reason we're, I guess, purchasing another vehicle at this time? Uh, and, and certainly Mr. Fordyce can, can talk in greater detail, but my understanding is that um, uh, essentially um, all the, the pickup trucks uh, are, while we, we do have a, f a number of them, um, they're typically spoken for on a regular basis. So, um, but so Jeff, if you want to add a little more detail. Sure. For us, for yours. Thank you. Um, and um, one thing to note that this is, um, this will not be a, an increase in the number of vehicles in the fleet. We are uh, eliminating the uh, prior uh, city superintendent vehicle. Uh, so that one is a, an older Crown Vic that uh, is is ready to be retired. Um, so the deputy director position, um, one of the uh, significant uh,
purposes of that position is to uh, provide more um, job inspection, more oversight in the field. Um, so just like the, the foreman perform those functions as well and have dedicated vehicles, um, and we're proposing to have the deputy director have a, a dedicated vehicle so that they can quickly respond to um, inquiries ab about, you know, that come in from citizens uh, so he can inspect, uh, say, a tree issue and get that assigned quickly um, and then check on <coughs> crews that are in the field. Uh, so it's, it's really kind of a, th this position is going to be, in addition to planning, it's also a very reactive position. Um, so uh, it's one of those ones where we feel it's necessary to have a dedicated vehicle to that particular position rather than trying to find a pool. And I can vehicle. understand. I can understand that. Um, did we? What did we do with the new police car? Didn't we? What What happened to the old one that we're replacing? I believe it stayed in the police department. Um, I'm not That's correct, isn't it, Chief Hart? Yeah. Okay. Because they are looking to um, also have more vehicle availability. And so, in this one, what are we purchasing? A truck or a? This is a. Um, what the cost here is a uh, a Ranger, Ford Ranger small compact pickup truck. Okay, um, thank you. I just needed to know that additional information this yeah. time. Uh, additional questions, Councilwoman Dillon. Thank you. Um, I guess I, I'm just sort of a bit taken aback that we're this far into the budget year, and I know this is a new position, but can it can't wait six months. We can't utilize a vehicle we have and then add this into our next year's budget. I mean, it just, I feel like we just keep reaching deeper into this purse, <coughs> thinking that it's just unending, and at yeah. some point we're going to have to to close it. Um, we looked at that, you know, so really the only the only vehicle that, that's available unassigned right now is the, uh, the old Crown Vic that we w would like to retire, and uh, the condition of that is such that we feel it is time to retire it um, rather than continue to use it. Um, so that's, that's why we went this route with the, the budget amendment rather than uh, waiting the time and, and um, getting into the next budget year. Um, but also operationally, you know, we're going to have um, a, a pinch. Um, we've got, you know, we've promoted internally the deputy. Um, we are uh, working on internal promotion of uh, foreman to replace that position and then we need to backfill uh, a crew member position. Um, we are. Uh, tentatively programmed to add another crew member in the next budget year. Uh, so those vehicles will be that much more spread thin. Um, so w essentially uh, trying to get ahead of the game um, and get this vehicle in place and continue to move these employees into place and, and have that full, I don't know, full implementation of the position rather than uh, a stopgap measure. I appreciate that. I, I'm just trying to figure out a way that we could put some kind of a bandage on until next budget year. Um, does this position require to be a truck? I, um, mean, I it, it, it seems like the Ford Focuses sit outside day after day unused for the, for the most part. Um, well, and so I just was wondering if there's just a way that we could util better utilize a vehicle that we already own in the interim. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I know the, the building inspector is out on inspections on a daily basis, and um, I'm not as familiar with the code enforcement activities and the assessing or appraising activities, but fr fairly certain those are uh, on a daily basis as well. Um, so, and the According to the, the memo, the, the net result of all these general fund changes um, is an increase in the fund balance. So while this particular item obviously is an increased expenditure, the net of the budget amendments is an increase in the fund balance. Okay. That, that's sort of, you know, voodoo math in my in my eyes that, you know, we are still spending money. So to, to, to s even though there's an increase at the end, you still have expenses coming out that weren't budgeted for. And that's where I, I just, 
I've got concerns. Um, all of these positions were also not in the budget originally either. Um, and we've had to absorb that. So I'm just not sure how many more hits we can keep taking um, and that we're just not planning accordingly for our needs. Um, so I, I'm just concerned about that and I'll just stop there. Thank you. Additional discussion, questions? It's, proper, it's a motion on the floor moved by Mitchell, seconded by Tahar to approve, acknowledge and to approve the fiscal year 21st budget amendments. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Nay. Ayes have it and the motion carries six to one. We move on to um, C-19-217, motion to acknowledge, recede, and to approve the resolution to accept road certification from Washtenaw County. Move, move to, to acknowledge. acknowledge. Moved by, I'll let Dylan be the mover. Moved by Dylan, seconded by Gearbaugh to acknowledge receipt. Uh, questions for city staff. Mr. Gearbaugh? Um, I believe this is the accepting of Maple Road. Correct. From the city limits or out to where we anticipate the new SACWA being put in. Um, has there been any discussion with the county in terms of, you know, we're taking this on, but that road has been, you know, in pretty poor condition even at that portion of the road um, that we can get some money from the county because I'm feeling like we're taking on an old road and having to deal with the same thing of now repairing it when the county's been getting money for repairing county roads just like we did with the um, um, roundabout that somehow we could have negotiated something to guarantee us some type of funding at some point or is there some plan in which we can acquire county money not necessarily city tax dollars to fix this road We've gone to the well many times on the tax dollars that's coming in from Grand Saqua. Not only we're we doing <laughs> sewer and sewer and water systems, but we're going to have to repair most of Maple Road and all the other. And we can only spend those dollars so many times. So I'd like to see us, you know, pushing back a little bit, especially when we're taking on something that is in, you know, not number one condition. Um, here would be my recommendation, Mr. Gear, but I don't, uh, I don't necessarily disagree with anything that you said, and I, I think it's always appropriate to err on the side of, of, of caution and, and see what we can, we can get with that, that is within reason. Um, so uh, my inclination or my, my um, recommendation would be to vote on the motion that was moved by Dylan, seconded by yourself to acknowledge receipt. Um, bring this back um, likely in two weeks, which would provide me time to send a communique to both Cheryl Sedell, the executive director of the Road Commission, and my friend Doug Fuller, the chair of the Road Commission, to see if anything can be done to either repair the existing road or to ensure that some additional dollars flow to the city to, to maintain or repair that section of Maple Road. That would be very satisfactory. Okay. <laughs> um, any additional discussion on the motion? It's been properly moved by Dylan, seconded by Gearbot to acknowledge receipt. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 19-219, community events for 2020. This was a, an issue that we discussed uh, two weeks ago at a council work session. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the November 20th, 2019 memo from City Clerk Royal and to approve or not to approve the waiver of fees, the waiver of fee, the waiver of fees request for the 2020 community events as submitted. Move to acknowledge and approve. Moved by CO to acknowledge and to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar. Council, or council, uh, City Clerk Royal, any additional comments at this time? No, I'll answer any questions. Okay, questions for the City Clerk. Discussion on the motion. That has been properly moved by CO, seconded by Tahar to acknowledge and to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously. Moving on to new business item 19-220, appointment of delegate and alternate delegate to the Washtenaw Regional Resource Management Authority. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the November 26, 2019 memo from DPW City Engineer, DPW Director Fordyce, excuse me, and to approve or not to approve the appointment of City Engineer, DPW Director Fordyce as the delegate and the deputy DPW Director, Dan Bennett, as the alternate to the WRRMA for 2020. Move to acknowledge and to approve. Thank second. you, Council Member Gearbaugh, and that was seconded by Ms. McClellan. Yep. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Director Fordyce, do you care to make any comments this evening? Okay. Are there questions for the DPW Director? There are no questions. Is there discussion on the motion? 
Then we'll proceed to vote. It's been properly moved by Gearbaugh, seconded by McClellan to acknowledge and to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it and the motion carries unanimously. Moving on to new business item 19-221, comprehensive compensation study bid selection. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the November 25th, 2019 memo from City Manager Campbell and to approve an award or not to approve the comprehensive uh, compensation study to Sage Solutions Group in the amount of $32,855.31. Move to acknowledge receipt. Moved by Gearbot to acknowledge receipt. Is that seconded by CO? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, City Manager Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, per Council's direction, staff uh, issued an, a request for proposal for a comprehensive um, compensation study. Uh, we received nine um, proposals. Um, our uh, staff uh, review team, uh, which consisted of uh, Treasurer Bennett, Chief Hart, uh, Engineer DVW Director F uh, Fordyce, um, Parks and Rec Director Scruggs, Administrative Assistant uh, uh, Geshman, and myself. Um, we narrowed it down to the top four and did the interview, did brought them in for, for interviews um, and made the recommendation um, of uh, uh, SAGE, um, the SAGE Solution Group. Uh, to conduct the uh, uh, this uh, com comprehensive compensation study. Very good, thank you, Mr. Campo. There are questions for the city manager, Mr. Gearbaud. Do you want to begin? Um, as I was reading through, and I thank you for forwarding the other two proposals from MML and um, A Point. I think it was A Point. Yes. Um, the reason why I wanted to see the MML was was to compare it because we always consider them being the number one source of understanding what the local governments are and within Michigan in itself. And looking at their proposal compared to this one, I do see a difference in it. Um, the one aspect, when it mentions about designing a, um, I guess, a set of uh, compensation that's particular to our city, it does mean that we're still going to continue to see a market and a comparable to other cities in our um, location, right? Yes, sir. I just wanted to confirm that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Additional questions? Councilman Mitchell. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Campbell, the only thing that I would add here, it was very comprehensive. Um, I see why, I see your reasons for, for choosing this company. I think that there is a long tradition of gender inequality when it comes to being paid. And I was surprised. Um, I had to read my packet very late. So I, I will just say I have not asked the city manager this and apologize to you for that. Um, I think it's appropriate to add some type of gender aspect. So uh, the positions that we have that are being filled by women is that, you know, is, are they being paid with parity compared to a similar position held by a man in the state? Um, I think that that could be a very important piece and also make us a more attractive workforce, place to work. So certainly, and that is included. Oh, I didn't see that. Yes, it's, it's, it was in the RFP, and it's, it's, so yes, it's. I really appreciate that. I'm so sorry I missed it. Oh, no problem. So no I did a search, <laughs> couldn't find it. Additional questions for the city manager? Councilwoman Dillon. Thank you, um, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Campbell, I, I want to make one comment first, um, which is that I, I think I've mentioned it in other instances, I think it would be very beneficial um, in, in the aspect of transparency that we have a person on these committees that is not have an interest in the outcome of them. Um, I, I think that it would be, it's really important that we and, and it's not meant that you would be swaying or anyone on this committee would be swaying a decision. But I think for optics, it, it's really important that we start putting on someone that does not have a vested interest in the city um, on, these, on these panels. Um, that being said, going into your memorandum, there, it says they're interviewing employees. Um, there's 37 full-time positions that are going to be evaluated. Um, how many employees do we have beyond the 37? And so, who's not being evaluated and at what level is this? Sure, so we have, that's 37 job titles, if you will, position titles that are, are being looked at and evaluated. Uh, we have, I uh, believe it's with the new hires, I uh, believe it's gonna be 61 full-time employees. Okay, and is there a reason that it's not 
everyone or is it well there's multiple people within those within jobs. those job titles okay Correct. so like there's you know there's 10 um uh maintenance worker threes for instance there's um let's see two sergeants the chief uh so 10 uh, there's 10 officers police officers for instance uh -huh. so that's that's why there's there's not 61 um so the 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 37 job titles are the ones that are because there's multiple people in those spots. Okay. And so how is it determined if there was, you know, person A, B, and C all in the same job, who would be interviewed? Uh, well, they could, it, it's just gonna de be dependent upon on the detail that, that's needed after the, they'll do a survey um, of the employees. And then de depending on any gaps of information, for instance, that, that may be there or, or based on the, the responses in the uh, uh, in the survey, um, they will be determined how in depth um, th uh, they'll need to go in, in those interviews. Okay, and the other thing I wanted to ask about is, will they be utilizing our organizational review documents as part of this? Uh, certainly, they they're welcome to to use it. I know they're going to evaluate. They're going to utilize excuse me, um, look at our uh, uh, performance evaluation um, tool that, that we developed uh, about a year and a half or so ago. Um, but certainly, and we'll also look at our current uh, uh, compensation uh, 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 plan that we have. Um, and, uh, but certainly they can, they can uh, look at uh, whatever information that they, they need to. <coughs> okay, um, so are you, asking them or are you waiting to see if they ask to see it? Uh, we're happy to, we can. I, I guess I, I want to make sure just provide that it's it to made them. available yep. to them. Yep, be happy to do that. You know, that this is an yep. intricate part of it. Um, then the other part is, I believe there was mention of the employee, are, are they gonna be looking at job descriptions, employee handbooks, all of that also? Uh, they'll be reviewing for the, they'll be reviewing the, the um, job descriptions for us and uh, make sure they're compliant and, and any, if they, if, they need, if they need to be updated, um, et cetera, they, they will do that as well. Okay. Um, okay, and then I guess my last question is, and I, I'm i sorry if I didn't remember seeing it here, what are they proposing for their time frame? Um, their final report and draft, I because I, I wanna make sure that council sees draft reports as well as a final report? Certainly, yep. Uh, we talked about that as well. Um, uh, they're saying that they're gonna push to have it, uh, I believe, uh, I'm looking at uh, Mickey, Joe, and Chief, I'm thinking. Um, to, to Mar I, 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 think I believe the, I remember he reading, it said end, March for I think budgeting. it's end of March, uh, it's, it's, so mid to mid end of March. Oh. And our folks are here, I'm sorry, I apologize, I did not. We have folks from Sage in the back, so if, if, if uh, you'd like to hear from them, they certainly can Ladies, do that. thank you for being here. Is there anything you'd like to add for the public record this evening? The, uh, as far as the interviews go, we're happy to interview as many as appropriate so that we get tracked down. Are you sure the job description is necessary or that the position is necessary? Because the position, a lot of times, the position ties with the position. Uh -huh. And so in order to get things accurate and sure, you really want to drill down Ladies, um, for the record, would you mind introducing yourselves? Sure, I'm Sherry McDaniel, and I am CEO at Sage Solutions Group. Very good. My name is Peggy Reese, I'm the president of Sage Solutions Group. Excellent, appreciate you being here tonight. And more importantly, appreciate the bid on, uh, on this important uh, initiative. Thank you. Councilwoman Dillon, any additional questions? Fine, thank you. Additional questions from the dais. Mr. Gearbaugh. Uh, could you give us a little background on your other governmental entities that you've worked with? I saw one mentioned Genesee County. Yeah, we, um, you come you up the mic, yeah. that'd be great. You wouldn't mind. I try to avoid microphones. <laughs> <laughs> so do we. 
It's actually it's easier to pick up on the I know. <laughs> and usually they're so far over my head, I avoid them anyways, because they're so short. Um, and so uh, governmental entities for us, I mean, we've done some uh, work. Genesee Road Commission continues to be a customer of ours and a very valued customer. We did a similar project for them. Uh, we are working on it. They're looking at final budget approval right now for the wage plan that was done. As far as transparency, we will show every single step of the way, each iteration, because even though you get the data, your wage plan is unique to you. And developing that takes, well, it takes just about everybody. And everybody's gotta be comfortable with the plan once it's designed. So we give you the data, and it's very important that uh, everybody be comfortable with what that data means and how it translates to a wage plan for you. So we're working with Genesee County Road Commission uh, quite closely on that right now. We've done Cass Van Buren, not on a wage plan, but on other employment matters. Um, and we currently have the Detroit Housing Commission that we are working with on a similar wage plan. So those are our current similars. Very good. Thank you very much. Additional questions for staff or our guests? Mr. Gearbaugh? Well, one other question. Um, I noticed that it's a good thing that part of this proposal has follow-up from which you come back for potentially eight hours and so forth. Tell me what that involves and what kind of aspect that you would be looking at when you come back to assess how we've implemented and I guess whatever else you would look at. Sure. If, and I keep talking. Do you want to? Okay. Um, <laughs> I hate that. I say I, I hate the microphone and then I steal it and that's just not right. Um, the One of the things that a follow-up is very important is once you develop a wage plan, you have to use it. And if you're not using it, like every single hire is a one-off, the wage plan is destroyed in a year or less. And so checking back to make certain that it's being utilized and what's working with it and what isn't. Because again, it's something that you gotta, it, you live with it every single day. Uh, and it's important that it be fair and consistent uh, and applied consistently. So we like to see that that's happening. Sometimes there's brush ups that are necessary. Market forces will change uh, one job faster than another. <coughs> it just happens. And so kind of reassessing a job or two, or even the whole thing, if you say, you know, you know, we, we just, the market tanked on, you know, 20% of these or 40% of these positions, we really need to look at the whole thing. Because it not always, doesn't always just go up for everybody. In some positions, it goes down. So, so a brush up, a polish up, make certain everybody's following it. Certain wage plans, you've got to make certain that the managers are doing what they need to do. They're assessing it correctly. A part of it, if you're going to tie wage to performance, which is, I think, where you're, you know, you're heading very strongly. Um, in general, you want to make certain that that's being done fairly and consistently, that somebody's not just doling out a bunch of high scores so that they can get <coughs> good raises. So we look at all of that and make certain that it's still running, because I think ongoing maintenance and monitoring of this huge investment that you're making is essential. Very good. Thank you. Additional questions? Mr. Seale, did you have one? I did, but I located it okay. in the material. Thank you. Very good. Ladies, thank you again. Appreciate your time. We have a motion on the floor moved by Gearboss, seconded by CO to acknowledge receipt. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. How about a motion to approve an award or not to approve? So moved. To award. Award. To approve an award. Second. Yes. Seconded again by CO. So moved by Gearboss, seconded by CO to approve an award. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mr. Gearboss. Um, I'm looking forward to this because I think we need to do this just to address. We have had the same compensation approach. <laughs> for almost 20 years um, and I would like to see um, it be I guess considered and re revisited just to make sure that whatever we're doing is consistent with the market and where we're going forward my one thing that I do appreciate with this is that I hope it will look at some of our positions that we are having a difficulty filling just because of the job market and the ability to compensate and to bring it forward namely the city assessor and and any other position dispatch or so forth very good 
Well, I would add, as I said moments ago, I think this is a very important initiative. And while I'm not always keen to spend this kind of money, uh, I think this sort of in this type of endeavor is indicative of a progressive and forward-thinking organization. Uh, which strives for continued improvement, wants to make sure that we're appropriately compensating people to attract the best talent and retain talent, but also that we're offering wages that, that are, are comparable, fair, and reasonable. Um, so uh, I look forward to working with you in, in my capacity as mayor, and more importantly, look forward to uh, seeing the final results of this analysis and, and as you indicated, implementing them uh, into our organization in the ensuing years. Um, so with that, if there's no additional discussion, there's a motion on the floor moved by Gearboss, seconded by CEO to, uh, to approve and to award. Excuse me. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. I say have it and the motion carries unanimously. Again, ladies, thank you very much. Uh, we move on to new business item 19-222. This is wastewater, uh, wastewater system, system improvements, RBC repairs. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the November 26, 2019 memo from Wastewater Treatment Superintendent Wygowski and to approve an award or not to approve the wastewater, tris, wastewater system, system improvement contract to should ICE Industry Manufacturers and Contractors Incorporated in a not to exceed amount of $285,051. And to acknowledge receipt. Moved by Gearbot to acknowledge receipt. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dylan. Uh, Mr. Campbell, are you taking the lead on this in Mr. Wagowski's nod? Uh, Director Fordyce's. Excuse me. Director Fordyce, the floor is yours whenever you're ready. Thank you very much. Um, uh, at one of the work sessions, we spoke about the condition of the uh, a number of the RBCs and uh, then went ahead with um, preparing uh, bid documents to repair uh, seven of those. And uh, also included in that was uh, um, uh, repair of two of the existing drive units so that we will have um, spares ready to go on the shelf in the future. Um, Tetra Tech uh, prepared the bids, uh, opened the bids for us, and uh, evaluated the contractors that submitted bids. And uh, Mr. Brian Rubel is here today uh, to answer any questions about that process. The uh, low bid was uh, Shoal Dice out of Battle Creek, and their bid was lower than uh, estimates, which is always nice. And uh, all of their references checked out very well. And uh, again, Mr. Rubel can speak to that a little bit more if you have any questions. Okay. Mr. Brian Rubel, it's good to see you. Do you have any comments you'd like to add for the record before we open it up for questions? I, I hope my letter summarizes uh, the research uh, pretty clearly, so, so I, I guess I'll just wait yep. for questions. I thought your cover letter, cover letter was very thorough. Thank you for that. Questions for either Mr. Rubel or our DPW director. Mr. Gearbaugh. Um, thank you for your letter that explains most of it. Um, could you explain more on the issue with the bidding? There was something to do with, I guess it was the list they were, the individuals or something with the list price of the RBCs, whatever the gears. I, there was some mistake on that? or Yeah, I think I can answer that. Uh, of course, when we prepare a uh, engineer's estimate uh, prior to bidding, we get a lot of our information from calling the vendors and suppliers and, and getting prices of the components. So we used a list price. And we prepared an estimate of $350,000. What we learned is the vendor uh, was a, quite aggressive in, in their pricing. They, they wanted the work and uh, gave the contractors uh, a very favorable pricing on, on these gear drives. So. I think that's one reason that the bid came in uh, lower than our estimate was uh, the components that made up the bid uh, were priced less expensively than our estimate. Okay. Oh, it was more that. I, I misread it. I was thinking there was something there was a mistake in the, in the bid and they had to change that. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. That, so that checked that out very well. Yes. Thank you. Mayor Pertem Tahar, did you have a question? Yes, I did. It's, it's just one of arithmetic. Um, so we're being asked to approve $285,051. And Mr. Rubel, in your memo, you say the actual completed project cost may be slightly less or slightly more. So if it were slightly more, would you have to come back to council to approve? A, a change order. Uh, yeah. we'd, ha so we'd, we'd have a change order either way. There are an ad change order or a debug okay. change order. Just, yes. Okay. Yep. You would have to approve all those costs. Yep. yes. Okay. Thank you. Additional questions. Councilwoman Dillon. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rubel, um, page two of your letter, you talk about there was 35000 remaining for professional services from the odor abatement project that you're going to administer this project. What exactly does that entail? 
because I don't see any documentation that lists like what your hours are, but you think that you're going to utilize $35,000. Yes, the, the council had previously authorized us for the odor control project, of which we completed substantially under budget, uh, about $35,000. So right. my proposal to the council would be just to use that balance to uh, prepare the documents, the contract documents, um, uh, attend progress meetings, uh, periodically observe the progress of the contractor to make sure that the uh, the units are being installed in a manner upon which they were designed that type of service okay because I, I I appreciate that and I understand but I don't see that so that's in addition to this money it's not well, part of this bid these dollars this is separate dollars that are sitting in a separate account correct it, it, it's a separate contract that the city already authorized Tetra Tech to perform. Under the odor abatement? Uh, that is correct. So this still falls under the same scope of that project? Uh, because the loan uh, uh, administrators approved uh, this service to be eligible under the loan, okay. so that they would also approve the Tetra Tech contract to be used in that, um, that manner. Okay. I guess what I'm, I'm concerned with is that we don't have any sort of billing from you as to what you anticipate your hours to be. You're just saying we've got 35000 left and we just we're going to use it up. So I guess I'm just trying to, to figure that part out of, you know, what happens if you come back and say, oh, it was more than thirty five. now you owe us another extra X, Y, Z. Perhaps what would be beneficial. Um, the statement that you just made about what your responsibilities are going to be. Yes, could be you happy to put that letter. Put that in, in writing, Absolutely. forward it to the city manager. We'll put it on file and then disseminate it be forward more than to happy city to council that. members. And that's fine. Um, my last question, Mr. Rubel, is has there been any, or Mr. Fortes, any analysis of the remaining RBCs and what their life expectancy is at this point? Um, as part of the SAW, grant all the components of the wastewater treatment plant were evaluated in terms of their expected remaining life so I don't know what those are off the top of my head but uh, yes they have been looked at and they are part of the asset management plan for the wastewater treatment plant so this is not this is not the end of working on the RBCs they right. are, you know they're they're doing hard work they will continue to need maintenance and parts replacements um, as long as we're using them so you know even if we were installing all brand new ones there would be continual maintenance and repairs necessary. So yeah, the ones that we aren't doing anything under this contract, there will be future maintenance on those, but it is, um, uh, it'll be in more of a preventive maintenance mode uh, following our asset management plan. Okay, and are these rebuilds considered new quality? And what would the life expectancy be of them? They do come with a warranty. I, I did not bring that with me. I, I want to say it's 18 months, okay. um, and, and which, is compa which is comparable to the, the new equipment. So, okay. But what is the life expectancy of? I mean, we just keep dumping money into what we already all know is obsolete technology. Um, well, at some point, do we start channeling money toward newer equipment, better technology? Well, that, that's sort of the genesis of the, the evaluation that you are currently doing about the future of, of sewer services in well, the that, greater yeah, that's, community. Yeah, that's a, a bigger question, of course. Um, <laughs> Mr. Fordyce, I think, said, said, said it very well. This is very heavy equipment under extreme amount of load, so it will continue to wear and it will continue to be stressed. And uh, there will be repairs continually be needed on this type of equipment. That just goes, and we had this discussion back in September. This, this is one of the disadvantages to the RBCs is it's very heavy equipment, very labor intensive. The, there is an advantage and it's very low energy. Uh, it, it consumes a very low amount of energy. So that's the trade-off. Thank you very much. Well, Additional questions, Councilwoman Mitchell. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, thank you, Mr. Rubel. Thank you, Mr. Fordyce. Um, I guess my question was looking a little bit further down the road. Um, how old is this, the RBCs? Like, when did those kind of come out? 
Those were installed in the mid to late 80s. That, that is my recollection mid as well. Mid to late 80s, yes. okay. And then um, if Christmas comes and some year and we have a new wastewater treatment plant, is this technology obsolete or would we use this investment and move, you know, somehow incorporate that into new, the new, a new plant? I, I think the analysis is going to reveal that this technology would not be used in a new application. Um, in particular, uh, I mentioned how, how it uses a, a low amount of energy. This technology came into prominence in the late 70s and early 80s when uh, the energy crisis was occurring mm. and energy costs were going up. So this was a technology proposed to lower the amount of energy. Mm -hmm. um, it has some advantages, disadvantages. I, I, it, many of them are very technical. I hate to even start down that path uh, in, in front yeah. of you. But I, I answered your long answer to your question is I would, I, I would not think that this is a technology that would go into a new wastewater plant. Okay, thank you. Additional questions? Mr. Kierbaugh. Um There was a comment somewhere in there about um, we weren't necessarily completed with our over abatement project. You had some things to finish up or is it all completed? Yes, uh, I, I was certain somebody was gonna ask me that. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I left here, I believe it was September 6th, uh, we had this discussion. Um, I, we gave the uh, contractor until I think it was September 14th uh, to finish. And largely they were finished with the field work of their contract, but uh, Construction contracts come with an enormous amount of paperwork, uh, warranties and subcontractor uh, waivers and, and so forth. <clears throat> they have been continuing to work on the paperwork uh, since September, well, since I last uh, spoke to you. So I believe we are down to a single uh, uh, operation and maintenance manual, one piece of equipment is all that is outstanding. So that is where we stand. That's, that's good to hear. And it's yes. just one little thing. Yes, all the field work is done. Gentlemen, thank you, appreciate it. We have a motion on the floor to acknowledge receipt. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously. How about a motion now to approve an award or not to approve the wastewater system improvement contract to Schildeis Industry Manufacturers and Contractors Incorporated in the not to exceed amount of $285,051. Move to approve an award. Second. Moved by Gearbaugh to approve an award, seconded by CO. Is there any discussion? No discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor of, of approving and awarding say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously. We move now to discussion, uh, the discussion portion of our agenda. First up is committee, com uh, commission, committee, and task force reports from council members. Mayor Pro Tem Tahar and then council member Seal. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, on behalf of the Environmental Commission, um, if you've come into City Hall, you've seen uh, the collection bin for um, discarded Holiday Lights um, is now out in the lobby. And um, I would also mention that uh, Lowe's is also collecting them at their stores. Thanks. Very good. Mr. Seal. The Medical Marijuana Task Force met a week ago last Thursday. Um, we looked at the results of the surveys that had been provided to us by the public. And um, I'm in the process now of trying to uh, prepare a, a um, proposed uh, recommendation to council. So hopefully something will be forthcoming in the next, uh, well, maybe a week or two. Very good, thank you, Council Member CEO. Council McClellan and then Councilwoman Mitchell. Yeah, Parks Commission uh, met last week and we started discussing our goals and um, our SWOT analysis and stuff for budgeting uh, purposes. So um, also I believe, um, I think that was it, sorry. Okay, very good, <laughs> Councilman Mitchell. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, just a few words about Youth Council. Um, Council Member McClelland and I met with. Um, we talked about it last time. Last we did. Time. We talked about it last time. So, <laughs> the, what, what the um, progress is on that, I've been reaching out to faculty at the high school um, and have some planned campus visits so I can help recruit students for that. Um, and then, as regarding the Historic District Commission, we will be hopefully at least almost done with the ordinance language. Um, that's been languishing a little bit and we really want to light a fire under that project and, and get it done. So we'll be 
meeting this week on that issue. Very good. Additional committee commissioner task force reports. Just a heads up to all of you that um, probably tomorrow or Wednesday a letter will go out to all of the members of our various boards and commissions who um, who are members of the public who serve in, in those uh, in those positions whose terms are expiring at the end of this calendar year, asking them if they want to re up. Um, if they do, um, I ask what I believe are necessary and obligatory questions, which is. Why do you enjoy serving and what do you feel you, co you have contributed and what will you contribute in the future? Um, the reason I bring that up is one, to give you a heads up and two, that if you know of folks who are interested in serving on city boards and commissions, please encourage them to fill out the application online and provide it to the clerk's office. If we can't immediately accommodate your interest, we keep those on file and as the clerk can attest, there are many times throughout the year when um, people resign uh, for a variety of reasons, sometimes abruptly, and we need people to to step into those 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 key positions. So, again, if you know members of the public who are interested in serving on a city board and commission, please encourage them to to apply. Additional committee commission or task force reports. How about reports or other announcements, Mr. Gearbaugh? Just a couple. I want to invite everyone to the Christmas tree lighting tomorrow night. Uh, five o'clock, six o'clock, six o'clock. I can't six. remember that. Six o'clock, and then um, there will be the Christmas parade this Saturday at five. Very good. And then five thirty. Five thirty. I don't have the times in front of me. And then the other one is the one I do know is I'm inviting everyone out to Rentschler for Christmas at the farm on the 14th and 15th of December, from one to four. We will have um, Santa Claus come visit one day, and then one day Mrs. Claus will read stories to um, individuals. So we're hoping to see you all come out for the holidays. Very good. Um, going to pass those down. I took the liberty earlier today of working with the clerk's office and we printed up some palm cards promoting our upcoming strategic visioning session on December 9th. If you would please distribute those, the clerk can also print you off larger posters if you have places around town that it would be appropriate to, to, to display one. Again, members of the public, we strongly encourage you to attend and participate next Monday for our annual strategic visioning session, which will begin at 5.30 p.m. Uh, at the community room of the old hospital, currently Evangelical Homes of Michigan, at 440 West Russell Street. Um, should last about two hours, and we do provide dinner and refreshments. So uh, please plan to attend, and uh, we welcome your thoughts and ideas on how we can improve the quality of life uh, in the Saline community. Uh, and then to piggyback on Mr. Gearbaugh's comments about the um, parade, the council banner is currently in Treasurer Bennett's office, and I asked her to leave it in the hallway um, adjacent to her office and the assessor's office when she leaves work on Friday. So whoever, whoever is the first person to arrive um, at 5, 4.30 on Saturday, if you'd please come to City Hall and retrieve it, that would be great. Okay. Are there any other reports or announcements? Mr. Your, Campbell, I'm oh, sorry, sorry Councilman Mitchell. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to make mention that um, there was a a news article that was published about the certification in the historic district, um, and there were there were maybe some things that weren't so clear that you know we weren't our historic district was not going to be dissolved. Our, our the districts the commission is is healthy, and um, so I've reached out to Mr. Longmore, and um, I'll provide him with some more information, and and we can um, maybe correct that. So, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Campbell, are you providing an update on the wastewater treatment plan? Um, or Mr. Fortis is? Yeah, it's, it's written. Um, okay. No? Okay. Well, I, well certainly I can, I can review it if, if you'd like. Um, I don't know that we need to review it. Are there questions for the city manager regarding the um, uh, memorandum that uh, Mr. Wojgowski submitted? Um, just, yeah, just one question Please. regarding the, um, you know, we keep continuing to tech use the detector to try and um, find the hydrogen sulfide levels or whatever. At what point will we have sufficient information to share with council? Uh, well, I was hoping to, we, we as staff were hoping to have that tonight and my apologies for that. I know um, talking to, uh, to Steve, um, one of the challenges is, is the time difference in the companies in Arizona um, trying to, for assistance, but still we, we, will, we will shoot to have that for um, 16th. For the 16th. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Additional questions, Ms. Dillon? Thank you. Um, I, I guess I wanted to under, better understand, and Mr. Campbell, you probably are not going to be able to, about this ultraviolet um, bulbs in this issue. I, I have sort of 
a little, <laughs> when I heard poor disinfection, it just made me a little nervous. <laughs> um, so I don't know if there's anything that you know about that or if Mr. Wygowski can just provide an update about that further information to council outside of this meeting. Yeah, we will, uh, without getting too, too technical, I, I will, we will make sure we will do a, our best and plan to have something out to council this week. Okay. And what? I also saw no mention of the Nova filters. Where do we stand with those? Uh, still the same as we were the last time where we have one is operating and one is not. Okay. And are we making movement um, to resolve our issues with Nova? Uh, we are. Uh, we're hoping we're working um, with uh, uh, City Attorney uh, Wood um, and uh, um, finalizing some some um, agreement language uh, so that our hope is, is to bring that to the sixth right right now we're hoping to have that on the agenda for the 16th of December and we'll also have someone uh, from Nova here to uh, to talk to, to council okay. thank you mr. Campbell one other thing um, because it came up at the last meeting and you and I and mr. Wagowski had a brief conversation about fencing or screening along the um, back side of the wastewater treatment plant, especially to those properties that abut S Circle Court and Anwood. Um, I indicated to a concerned resident that we would be discussing that this evening and hopefully developing consensus since Mr. Wagowski is not here. We can't develop consensus, but uh, I'll relay to the concerned resident that the issue will be revisited on the 16th. But if you could make sure that Mr. Wagowski has a recommendation at that time, um, that would be helpful. Okay, uh, Mr. Campbell, do you want to provide a brief update on the organizational review? Um, we are, the, you know, the next thing um, um, myself that, that we're working on is, is um, one of the next big items uh, as far as recommendations is to establish a, um, and develop an official succession plan. And, and we, we certainly have done that informally uh, for the last number of years, but um, uh, per, the, per the report, per the study, uh, we will be um, uh, having a um, establishing a committee. Um, I believe it's next week. I think we're going to meet. Um, so we will uh, uh, of staff members, and we will um, begin working and moving that forward. Questions, Ms. Dillon? I just would like to make a comment, and I'm just hoping that the city can find a way to sharpen its pencils when it comes to budget season to consider bringing HR on board. Um, I know it was one of the top recommendations in the organizational uh, review process, and I just think that right now we have an awful lot of HR issues that are falling onto the city manager and taking him away from his duties, um, and I, I am getting greatly concerned about that right now because now we're going to have a compensation study on top of the organizational review. He spent a tremendous amount of time this last half of the year in the hiring processes, and um, I just think his time can be spent otherwise. Additional questions regarding the organizational review? Okay, um, who's taking the lead on the state-mandated cross-connection control program? Mr. Fordyce. There. Uh, for many years, the state of Michigan has required the city to have a cross-connection control program, but it's been limited to uh, commercial, industrial, and multifamily properties. Uh, the legislation has been in place uh, for several years for the state to require residential cross-control programs as well. Um, every year we have what they call a sanitary review with the EQ, but it's actually a review of our water system. Um, and they've uh, every year said, you know, Somewhere down the road, we're going to require this residential program. And um, so I started budgeting for it. I got some estimates on how much the program would cost, and I've been putting that money into the water distribution budget. Um, and well, this is the year, the year that the DEQ has said it's time to uh, begin the residential program. So, um, you know, we're ready for it. We have the money in the budget, um, have a proposal from our uh, current cross control connection program provider. Um, there really are only um, two consultants in the state that do this work, um, so uh, recommending st uh, sticking with the provider of our uh, commercial, industrial, and multifamily program. Um, there's some efficiencies there, and um, uh, 
this week I need to submit this plan to the state for them to review our proposal um, and make sure that it's up to snuff. And then uh, we will start doing, we need to revise our ordinance um, and then uh, begin these inspections. Uh, the residential program in the beginning will be exterior only inspections. Um, looking for the, the common cross connections on a residential property are uh, your simple hose bib and irrigation systems. Um, there also can be uh, pieces of pool equipment that can cause cross connections, so they'll be looking for those as well. Um, uh, probably five years from now, we will have to begin some interior inspections on the residential program as well. Um, and then it'll get you know, more difficult, more expensive at that time. It, um, and those inspections are looking for boiler systems, which are fairly rare in residential, but um, older homes might still have those. Uh, water assisted sump pumps, uh, depending on how they're plumbed, can create cross connection problems. Um, and certain water softener arrangements can also create cross connection programs, problems rather. Um, so that's, so there's more, you know, there's more changes on the horizon, uh, but distance horizons. Um, kind of the scale of what we're looking at is um, more than 800 inspections per year to meet the state's requirement that we look at all of the houses uh, within a five year period. Uh, we would start with just a three year contract, um, but that's the pace that we need to keep to uh, uh, meet the state requirements. Questions for GPW Director for Ice Councilman uh, Gearbaugh? Just a couple. Um, when you mentioned the 800 being inspected, do we do it based on age of the home or uh, any of that type of condition? No, it's just sheer numbers. Sheer numbers. Yeah, everything needs to be inspected. No, okay, so we wouldn't look at our new subdivisions assuming that they would be something we would check more later on, or we're not really sure. <laughs> Could be a yeah. problem anyway, either yeah. way, so. I, su I suspect it'll just be chunk, 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 just kind of geographically move Just chunks, move like across. we do with the sidewalks, okay. Yeah. Um, will they be any more testing in terms of sanitary connecting into storm sewers or any of that potential or storm in the sanitary? Um, not as part of this program. Um, that's uh, more of our stormwater program, which uh, we don't have any testing um, planned right now. We did um, pretty comprehensive citywide testing of storm looking for sanitary cross connections um, and um, maybe 10 years ago now. Uh, we located one and we, we, we fixed that problem. Uh, there were a couple other hits that we tracked down and they were animal issues, not actual sanitary cross connections. Um, but part of our new construction uh, inspection standard is a dye test. Uh, so every new newly constructed home has a dye test to confirm that the sanitary is connected to the sanitary. Okay, thank you. Additional questions, Councilwoman Dillon. Thank you. Mr. Fortas, I'm so sorry. Can you give me like the really quick Reader's Digest version of what exactly cross connection control program is? Under, like what exactly is a cross connection? Under certain conditions that are fairly rare, but um, do happen, you can have your drinking water supply connected to something that then gets sucked back into the distribution system. And usually the something that gets sucked back in is not all that clean. So if you have a garden hose laying in a mud puddle and one of these pressure shifts happen, it could suck mud back into the distribution system, which could, you know, could have E. coli with it and, and cause an infection. Um, there are um, mechanical systems, uh, cooling tower type things that have similar possibilities. Uh, slop sinks in, you know, janitorial mop sinks in, in factories, uh, depending on how they're plumbed, they can create the same kind of situation where you'd have, you could potentially have mop water getting sucked back into the distribution system. It's a rare occurrence, but it is significant enough that there's this, you know, very large scale state legislation requiring us to investigate and eliminate all these sources. And should you find an occurrence Who's responsible for it? Um, in this program, it would be the homeowners. So um, this this does um, provide the simplest fixes. The most common is the unprotected hose bib. So if they do an inspection and there's a hose bib and all they need to do is screw on this little $5 fitting, they're gonna do it right while they're there and bring it into compliance right away. That's okay. included in the contract. Um, more involved things, if there's 
an irrigation system that's not plumbed properly, they would have to um, get a contractor and, and get that uh, get okay. that repaired. So you mentioned earlier that this was already budgeted. Mm -hmm. Is so we've got dollars set aside for it currently. Um, Correct. So it, we're not looking at any additional water rate adjustments no. as a result. No, not at this point. I mean okay. that. So those professional service dollars are in the budget and included in the current rate analysis. Um, and going forward, for the, at least the next three years, this cost will be the same. Um, and then after that, we'll have to look at that again. But I don't see a significant change. And just logistically, do homeowners have to grant access? This is totally an exterior process Correct. right now. Yes, but they still have to. There will, there'll be notices and, um, you know, individual notices to the property owner saying, "Hey, and this week we're going to be there for a, an external inspection." Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Additional questions, Director Forrest, Thank you very much. Uh, finally, we have Washtenaw County book. So very briefly, um, and there is a book that will remain in the clerk's office if folks would like to take a look at it. Uh, I was contacted by my predecessor, former Mayor Driscoll, about two weeks ago um, to inform me that a gentleman who I had met previously, Dale Fisher, who is the author of several books, including a book on Ann Arbor, I think multiple books on Ann Arbor, and also one on Jackson County, is preparing to publish um, early in 2020 a Washtenaw County book. He takes photos from, from a helicopter. And um, he is looking to have um, most of the municipalities participate in this book. And by participating, then your community would be, would be featured in several pages um, in, his, in his publication. And so he provided me and his associate provided me with some sponsorship packets. Obviously, to participate, it requires a financial contribution. So what I'd ask that you all do is take a look at the the book, what he's proposing, take a look at um, the sponsorship documents that are here and that will remain in the clerk's office. You can probably also scan these and send these out to council if that's not too much of an inconvenience. And then what I'd like to do is invite Mr. Fisher um, to our upcoming council meeting on December 16th, either him or an associate to address any questions that you may have and see if we can develop consensus as to whether or not the city of Saline would like to participate and move forward with this project. Sound reasonable? Okay. Very good. Um, we come now to the second public comment period. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time, make comment or question to City Council. This public comment period will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Are there any citizen comments? I'm, I'm Matt Rockwell, um, Saline citizen for a long time know a lot of you guys up there. Um, under yesterday, you know, the marijuana law got opened up um, to the city of Ann Arbor. I am wanting you guys to opt into it because I think it will bring, one, good revenue to the city. Two, I also think that it's good to have around if you're wanting to enjoy yourself um, or whatever. Um, but I also think it would be a good tax break for us to have a dispensary in this city. Um, under to John C.O., as a cop, I think he's wrong um, on that. I think you could, we're pushing, and I'm working with some of the states legislators on pushing this through where you can smoke it openly out on the streets. So I think we should at least get some sort of dispensary and opt into it. There's a building right down the way here. We can have it right down the way that's not being used. Um, so you guys got to at least opt into this thing because it's bringing more revenue to Ann Arbor than it is here. So. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate your comments. Additional citizen comments. <clears throat> Hello.
Hello. Um, my name's Larry Osterling. I run the Saline Area Chamber of Commerce, as I think most of you know. Um, I'm here to uh, be part two of all the thunder that Dean has already stolen from us, talking about today's, <laughs> this week's parade. Um, <clears throat> but I am here to say um, it's shaping up really well. Um, one of the things when I came back from retirement in September concerned me was this event, because believe it or not, even in September, I know that the process is well underway. Parade this size, event this size that we have, um, I can tell you there's thousands of little things that go into it, lots of details, lots of time and effort, and um, not to say that we don't mind putting the time in. We've been doing this for over 40 years, so we know what we're doing. Um, in fact, last year, during the afterglow, somebody came up and said, boy, you did it without a hitch. Um, but the fact is there's always hitches. <laughs> it's just planning and knowing how to keep them so we have them under control. And for that, I do appreciate all the support I get from the city, uh, especially from our police department, so because they always get the final hitch and they handle things for us. But um, usually it comes off pretty well. On the positive side, I, I do want you to know, too, um, without going into great detail, because i got a great mix of performing things and um, some interesting things for all ages, but I want you to know <clears throat> best might be a relative term. I think it is the best. I know that we are the biggest uh, Christmas parade in the county, and I think we can all be proud of that because it speaks well for our community. And we get a ton of people. I, I know I sat down for the kind of the final count with my event coordinator for this, trying to figure out um, how many people participating and volunteering were up over 1,200. It's probably going to be much more than that by the time we get it done. If it all comes together, I hope it does. You'll see me smiling on Monday. Um, because <laughs> it's a big deal. So, um, and I, I, the last thing I just wanted to say, I appreciate the support we've gotten for um, the grocery raffle, which is sort of a fundraiser for us for this event. The um, overall budget. Uh, the overall budget for this parade is seventeen thousand five hundred. Um, we'll probably exceed that, but not by much. You hit the target, but uh, supportive of that is the grocery raffle. And I know uh, Todd turned me, turned in some tickets today, and Heidi, I knew you sold for us, so I appreciate everyone's help with that. You kind of get the low end of the stick when you're one of the last sellers, because everybody walks by and says, <laughs> "I've already got my ticket, right?" Like but but uh, she did well, so like that. That works for me. <laughs> great for your selling skills and. Um, <laughs> I could go into details. I, I won't unless you're, you're interested. I just want you to know I do appreciate all the support we get from the city. Also, a reminder that the following week, the next Saturday, is um, something we do, too, which is kind of the treasure trails, which is sort of designed to build um, a little bit more recognition for some of the businesses that aren't actually right in downtown, but more in our outskirts area. So, um, and that's been going on for quite a while. But I think I've just used my time, so thank you. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate uh, your attendance tonight, and uh, thank you and your staff and all your volunteers for your efforts on the, is it the 44th annual Christmas parade? 44. 44. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, we really appreciate it. It is one of our signature events, and uh, we all look forward to participating and seeing you this Saturday. And Mr. Rockwell, we do, uh, like, I, like I indicated moments ago, appreciate your comments regarding marijuana. As Council Member CEO indicated, we, uh, we will be receiving a forthcoming recommendation regarding medical marijuana in the Salina community and recreational marijuana. That is a topic that I did promise we will revisit sometime in the future, and I'd be happy to keep you in the loop on that. If there are no additional citizen comments, um, is there any other business to come before Saline City Council this evening? Please note our upcoming meetings, and the, at this time, the chair would entertain a motion to convene into closed session to consider a confidential legal opinion of the city attorney, including legal opinions dated November 4th, November 12th, November 27th, 2019, regarding an eagle permit and discuss settlement strategy with the city attorney. So moved. Second. Moved to convene by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar, seconded by Mr. Gearbaugh. We will reconvene at the end, and I'm hopeful that I'll be able to share some information publicly. Clerk will please call the roll. Councilmember Dillon? Yes. Councilmember McClellan? Yes. Councilmember Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Tahar? Yes. Councilmember CEO? Yes. Mayor Morrow? Yes. We are adjourned into closed session at 818. Entertain a motion to convene into a regular session. So moved. Moved by Tahar to move into open session. Was that seconded by Dillon? I, yes. Okay. Clerk will please call the roll. Councilmember Gearbaugh? Yes. Councilmember Dillon? Yes. Councilmember McClellan? Yes. Councilmember Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Tahar? Yes. Councilmember CO? Yes. Mayor Morrow? Yes, right over here. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, we are convened into regular session at 9 29, 8 p.m.
pleased to announce that the City of Saline has completed a settlement agreement with Saline Ventures and MI Homes LLC regarding the Andalina Farms development on our city's western border. The proposed settlement agreement will be voted on momentarily, and if approved, the agreement will end the city's legal challenge to MI Homes' previously approved NPDES permit issued by the State of Michigan, specifically the Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. Now, to be very clear, the city's approach and strategy over the past several months has produced tangible and unambiguous gains. The proposed settlement agreement outlines two different and distinct outcomes, either of which would undoubtedly benefit the Saline community. Let's begin with option A. The developer will proceed with private utilities, but will commit to significant upgrades, including additional testing, installation of nanotechnology on the water supply to mitigate concerns relating to chloride and sulfates, or the construction of a membrane bioreactor package plant with a reverse osmosis system. Needless to say, these additional upgrades will come at a cost, and those costs will be incurred by the applicant, Saline Ventures. However, the technology upgrades will create additional safeguards and help ensure that our current and future residents' quality of life is not adversely impacted by this project. Option B is far more ambitious, but in my personal opinion, is the preferred choice. Under this scenario, the Andalina Farms property would be brought into the city of Saline, utilities would be extended to the parcel, and the necessary infrastructure upgrades would be completed in the next 12 to 18 months, allowing the developer to sell units and have buyers occupy homes by the final quarter of 2020. Further, it has been negotiated that the developer would contribute up to $5 million to assist with utility services. Finally, in order to execute option B, several issues would still need to be resolved, including a favorable annexation agreement with Saline Township, the development of a firm construction schedule, timing of financial contributions and specific dollar amounts, receiving cooperation from state regulars, state regulators, excuse me, along with a number of other issues. At this stage, execution of option B is far from certain. But the most significant benefit of this option is that this rather large and dense development would connect to our municipal water and sewer system. Also, let me be emphatic that our, and our state regulators agree, evidently, regional or municipal water or sewer systems should be the preferred option over their private counterparts. Uh, from a maintenance, liability, environmental, and cost perspective, overall, public systems perform better. Additionally, acquisition of this property will help the city grow in a steady and manageable way, reflecting a policy that I have discussed in the past, one I refer to as smart growth. Deliberate, thoughtful expansion of our city borders, diversifying our housing stock, expanding our tax base, and creating new economic opportunities. Let me restate, cities may either grow at a in, in a planned or strategic way, excuse me, uh, if they do not, they often languish, their tax bases suffer, and their residents' quality of life inevitably declines. Further, the property in question occupies a very st strategic position. It's the nail head and connects the city to other parcels that it may wish to consider, may wish, may wish to consider annexing, excuse me, in the future. Needless to say, subsequent discussion and action will need to be taken on this issue at upcoming meetings. Also concurrent to this, the city is eagerly awaiting our analysis from Tetratech on the future of sewer services in the Saline community. And as I've mentioned previously, we will be forming a working committee with our friends in Saline Township to consider a broad annex annexation agreement for the urban corridor that wraps around our city's southwest border. We must deal with growth in our community in a more holistic way and provide direction and clarity to all the appropriate stakeholders. To conclude, this is a big issue and I know that our residents and business community will have questions and concerns. Tomorrow my office will be reaching out to the neighborhoods and HOAs that are directly impacted by this project. Further, Andalina Farms and growth in the greater Saline community will be the primary topic of discussion at my upcoming coffee hour on Saturday, December 14th with County Commissioner Shannon Beeman. And of course, all residents are welcome and encouraged to attend. Further, while we'll be discussing a diverse array of goals and objectives at next week's strategic visioning session, I am certain this issue will come up. Council members and staff will be prepared to message on this topic and address questions and concerns. Questions from attendees, excuse me. Last, this was a protracted and complex process, and I want to acknowledge the efforts and contributions made by my city council colleagues, city staff, the attorney's office, and our consultants at GeoCentec. Thank you all for your time and efforts. It's very much appreciated. Finally, this process reminds me that some adversarial situations are unavoidable. 
but acrimony and animus should be avoided and negotiation should be done in good faith. In this vein, I want to acknowledge Alan Green, his associates at Dykema and MI Homes, and as I've stated in the past, there are many attractive features of this, of this project, Annalena Farms. We appreciate their interest in the Saline community and we look forward to continuing to work with them for the betterment of our city. Thank you very much. This is a motion. There's two. Oh, excuse me. Okay. So the first motion to consider this evening, colleagues, would be a motion to approve the settlement agreement between the city and MI Homes of Michigan LLC in the form presented uh, to the To the meeting, to, uh, to the form present to, to, in the form presented to the meeting with such changes. I'm sorry, Roger. Uh, changes, completions, completions and, and revisions as are approved by the mayor after consultation with the city attorney, and to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute the settlement agreement on behalf of the city. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by CO, seconded by Tahar. Is there discussion on the motion? No discussion. All those in favor of approving the settlement agreement signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries six to one. And the subsequent motion will be a motion to approve, oh, right there it is, a motion to approve the urban development area utility study to include connections to the West Belt sewer line at a cost not to exceed $49,500 as presented by Tetratech and to begin the survey work and other preliminary engineering work for the project and authorize Mayor Marl to sign all relevant documents. Move to approve and to authorize. That's been moved Second. by Councilmember Gearbaugh and seconded by Councilmember Seal. Is there discussion on the motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it and the motion carries unanimously. Is there any other business to come before Saline City Council this evening? Then the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn at 9.35 p.m. So moved. Moved Second. by Gearbaugh. Seconded, was that McClellan? Yep. Thank you, ma'am. All those in favor of adjourning at 9.35, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>